right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus, live from Clearwater Beach in Florida, where we spent the last two weeks with our mastermind members. And Marcus right next to me. So it was awesome. a blast. <laughs> it was fantastic. Great week. All right. Hey, so what we're going to cover in today's uh, stock market, not stock market update, please. Coffee with Marcus is... And Mark. And Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening in the markets right now? We will talk about the best trading computer for 2021. If you need a new computer for trading, which trading computer should you buy? A laptop, a desktop, maybe even just a tablet. So we'll talk about this. We will look at our current trades the trades that we entered here this week with our mastermind. And we will also talk about your questions. So as you can see, lots of things to do. What do you think? Let's Busy session. Absolutely. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then Click on like right now and let's get started. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about very quickly of what's happening in the markets. This will only take us two minutes or so because, I mean, if we switch over here, oh, that's the wrong camera. <laughs> Let me, I should be able to change that too. And while you do that, Marcus, there was some data today this morning, but honestly, Marcus, it was all about earnings. It was all about earnings today. I'm still trying to figure out if we can quickly get this camera fixed. And if we can, good. If we can't, we'll be fine. There, now you see us better. <laughs> this is what's happening when we are live. Anyhow, so yeah, the indices are up, up and away. I mean, if, if you look at this right here, so the Dow up 1.5%, the S&P up 1.6%, the NASDAQ up 1.8%. So what's happening, Mark? Well, yeah, I mean, today there was PPI data and PPI data came in a little bit better than expected, lower than expected. Uh, unemployment claims dropped below 300,000 claims last week for the first time since the pandemic. So, you know, positive data, good data. But the real issue or the real concern was, oh, sorry, not the concern, but the thing that was promoting this move higher uh, was earnings. We had some really solid bank earnings and Bank of America was up. They reported great earnings. We could take a look at BAC. Yeah, up 4%. Yeah, I mean, great day for Bank of America. Morgan Stanley, MS. So they're up 2.7%. Good day for Morgan Stanley. Citigroup, C. They're up, oh, 0.83%. So they're lagging oh. a little bit. Oh. All right, only 0.83. Okay, what about Wells Fargo, WFC? All right, WFC. They are actually down today. Interesting. So a little shift there. Also, some earnings from like UNH, United Health. All right, there we go. Well, they were up big, still up 4%. Uh, but uh, as you can see, they opened with the gap, pulled higher, and now pulling back here, but still up a solid 4%. Yeah, and in general, it was a revenue beat, also an earnings per share beat, and just some solid earnings across the board, and traders loved it. There we go. So this is what's happening. Uh, tomorrow, just a, a brief outlook of what's in store for tomorrow. I mean, the most important report is core retail sales, and traders will definitely pay attention to this to see what is consumer spending right now, and core retail sales is a very good indication there. But other than this, the focus will remain on earnings for the foreseeable future because as we go into the next week, this is when earnings season is really picking up. So next week and the week after will be super, super busy. Sure. And, it, you know, typically on Friday, it's a quiet day for earnings. That's going to be the case tomorrow. We do have Goldman Sachs reporting uh, before the bell. We also have Schwab and PNC Financial and then things pick up again next week. Yeah. All right, so now you know what is happening in the markets. And right now we will talk about the best trading computer. And I know a little bit earlier, there was a different topic announced. We sent out an email that says whether we will talk about the top three tips about the wheel strategy. And then we remembered that in the previous Coffee with Marcus, we promised you that we will show our computer setup. So this is where I set up a second camera right here so that you can see our camera, our microphone, our computer my iPad, Mark's computer. So we will talk about this setup here 
And uh, so we will do the three tips for the wheel trading strategy, the three most frequently asked questions. We will do this in the next Coffee with Marcus, uh, which we'll have then next Monday. All right, so let's talk about the best trading computer. So back in the days, you really needed a big, super powerful machine, a desktop. But is this still, still the case? Do you need a desktop? Do you need a laptop? If you do, how powerful does it need to be? How much money do you need to spend on trading computers? Is it really two or three thousand dollars or can you get away with a much cheaper model or maybe even an iPad? And this is exactly what we're going to talk about right now. So Mark, uh, back a few years ago, uh, you often had to download software onto your computer. If you think about maybe Trade Navigator, Trade Station, Think or Swim, I mean, all of the software you had to download it on the computer and then you needed a lot of processing power, especially if you had some scanners or filters set up, right? Or even maybe trading strategies. Exactly. And I would say up until about two years ago, I had a dedicated desktop that was just running 24 seven that was really powerful to power the monitors that I wanted to use and uh, just to, to have a you know faster speed and hard drive. But things have really changed. Absolutely. So these days uh, you can really get away with a fairly cheap laptop. Well, we'll take a look at a few models here in just a moment, but uh, let me just switch to the other camera and show you what both Mark and I are using. So. There you are. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. So what do you see here right now? This is a MacBook Pro. It's it's one of the older models. I'm just a, just confused in which camera I'm speaking right now. <laughs> Anyhow, you get the idea. So this is an older model. It's a 2015, I believe. Uh, I'm waiting for the Apple event uh, that is going to happen next week where they announce the new one with the M1 chip. And the only reason why I want to have such a powerful machine is because, as you can see, I'm doing all the video production there. This right now that you see on the screen is Ecamm Live. This is the software that I'm running. I'm not using this for trading. Honestly, for trading, probably a MacBook Air would be absolutely sufficient or one of the older models if you want to choose a MacBook. I think these days, Mark, the, the most important criteria is RAM. Yes. Right? The, the more RAM you have, the better. I mean, you should have a minimum of eight gigabit of RAM. 16 is better. 32, it's almost overkill. Do you know how much you have in your machine? I think that I have 16. I, I bought more that I just haven't uh, put in there. Um, but eight is light, 16 is, is good because you're, you're gonna be using multiple applications, right? And even uh, like, you know, having multiple windows open, that's using a lot of uh, memory. And, you know, if you have your, your trading platform open, you know, charting software of, of some sort, uh, maybe Zoom if you're you know, right. joining like as a mastermind member watching us together. Uh, so that's where RAM really helps. Yeah. And the other thing that is super important is the graphics card. So have the best graphics card possible. If you can, a so-called dedicated graphics card. In my experience, good RAM and a good graphics card is more important than processing power these days. These days. The reason why you want to have a really great graphics card is because it makes sense to connect multiple monitors. And uh, let's go back to, to our setup here. Uh, so you see that Mark actually has an external monitor. In fact, you usually travel with two yeah. external monitors. It, you know, for traveling, I think these are awesome uh, Asus. Yep. Uh, they're super light. They connect with a USB cable so that it's powered with USB. You don't have to have all sorts of wires. And uh, for me, having an extra two monitors, at least one, uh, really helps. My office at home is a little more crazy, uh, big 47 inch widescreen curved uh, Samsung monitor and then I have a couple of 27 inch Dells above and then the laptop. So at home it gets a little crazy but having two of these is just awesome if you're on the road. Yeah. And they can work from the office too. Like if you exactly. To. For me, since I travel a lot, I have uh, one of these. Actually, I had to recently replace it and uh, they were out of stock. So I have a slightly different model right now. But these are my two many monitors. So I usually have uh, right here my MacBook Pro and then I have the, the Asus right next to me. And this is the same setup that I'm using uh, wherever I am, wherever I'm traveling because I, I like to be on the road a lot. Yeah. One, one small thing because yeah, you go out and you buy one of those. Get a good stand. That's the one thing that I've found that a lot of these uh, these portable monitor companies, they don't have the best stand. And this guy is awesome. I guess we could put a link in the... Yeah, we'll put a link in the description this, to the monitor and also to this thing. makes it so much so, easier. Uh, as soon as we're done with the live show here. So so let's talk about uh, the philosophical, uh, philosophical question. Mac or PC? 
And I'll be honest, this is where my thoughts have really changed. 10 years ago, everything trading wise was built for a PC. So you really had to go out of your way to get things set up and to be able to use a Mac and it was inconvenient. So your, your charting software, nobody had things set up for a, uh, a Mac and also very few applications actually had the same level of, uh, of support or sophistication with their online platform as they did an EXE file that you download and, and run from your computer. Now, a lot of things are web-based, which makes it more convenient and that's where I'm, I'm tempted to make the switch here. Yeah, so th this is where right now we're seeing another shift happening. I mean, at first it was really Windows, Windows, Windows. Then it didn't matter as much because the applications were running equally well on Windows and PC. But now there's the shift to just browser-based exactly. technology. So now you can even consider of possibly just trading off an iPad. In fact, this is what you see me using for these shows here. Uh, so I'm using this iPad here. I have trading view open and you see I can mark on it. As you can see, I also have then uh, the PowerX optimizer since this is web based, have it here as well. So I'm using this. And the only reason why right now I am still using a computer for trading is because I currently, in addition to the Tradier accounts, also have a Tastyworks account. Now, yes, I know Tastyworks has an app and I'm not the biggest fan of the app. I, I feel that uh, the, the brokerage apps are not as good as they could be. Yeah, and honestly, I like having a little more real estate when I'm putting on trades. So I know some people swear by the apps, they love them, uh, but me, fat fingering in order, <laughs> big hands, and you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I like to be able to see everything. So I, I prefer uh, at least, you know, having a, a tablet or uh, a, a notebook, yeah. uh, laptop instead. Now, once I've moved my, account, my accounts over from Tastyworks to Tradier, then I can use only uh, the notepad, uh, the, the iPad. So for me, the iPad, just to show you, it's uh, one of these uh, 11 and a half inches, I believe, or 11.9 inches. So it's, it's the bigger one. And uh, again, for me, it's easier to see it this way. In terms of screen size for a laptop, I mean, we're pretty much the same. We both use a 15 inch. So we're not going crazy here because usually the larger the screen for your laptop, the heavier, heavier. the laptop. I mean, one of our mastermind members here uh, showed us, uh, what was it, an LG? Yeah. Super light, 17 inches and super light. So it seems that it's not as heavy as it used to be. But I would rather say, you know what, get a 15 inch and then uh, have one of these, which is yep. also 15 inch. So therefore you have pretty much two screens, same size. Yeah, I had a 17 inch uh, before and it was bulky. And, and again, for me, it's, it, it's I have the 15.7 or whatever it is. And a, a couple of these uh, have plenty of screen space. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about if you really want to buy a trading computer. So what 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 trading computer should you buy? So what is a, a reasonable laptop? So we just go to Best Buy. Sure. So let's go to Best Buy.com. The reason why I, I think it makes sense to, to go to Best Buy is at Best Buy, you see the laptop. I personally would not buy a laptop sight unseen from Amazon or Newegg or, or any of these websites. I, I would really like to see. And I highly recommend, I mean, log into the application that you're using the most. You want to see the, the screen resolution because surprisingly, the screen resolutions have a huge difference. Even though you have a 15 inch and a 15 inch, it seems that every graphics card and screen is optimized for a different resolution. And you want to make sure that you're comfortable using the so-called native screen resolution and not mess around with enlarging it or making it bigger or making it smaller. You will get the best quality if you're using the native screen resolution. Absolutely. So it's always good to, to you know, see how heavy it is, get that, that uh, look at it, and make sure that it's something that you want to invest in. Uh, I know that you're pulling up things. Just as a, a real nice shortcut, search for a gaming computer. A gaming computer will give you plenty of uh, power that you need. But as we mentioned earlier, the RAM right now is, is key because a lot of the applications that you're going to use for trading, they're actually they're not upgrading things every single day. And so they're a couple of years behind anyway. Yeah. So let, let's just take a look here at a, at a few laptops and really dive deep and uh, look uh, or tell everybody what we are looking for. Uh, so the first thing, if I can, uh, I will go for RAM of uh, 16 
gigabytes. I, I think this makes the most sense if you have 16 gigabyte of RAM. And you already see, if, if I'm actually uh, going back from 16 to 8 gigabytes, so right now uh, you see a few computers here popping up uh, with 8 gigabytes, and you see they are running around 500 to 600 dollars. So scrolling up here, so there's an HP for 580, there's one for 540. However, as soon as you move higher to 16 gigabyte, uh, so let me do that. Uh, can I sort this here? Should be able to. There we go. Uh, they are quickly jumping up to thousand dollars. So here we have, uh, for example, a Dell that's being featured for thousand uh, dollars. So this is 16 gigabyte, 512 uh, gigabyte solid state. So this is the, the RAM. What do you think about uh, the the hard, hard drive? drive? What do you think about hard drive? Is hard drive uh, size important? Uh, not so much these days, um, just because so much is web-based and cloud-based. So not like it was before. I think 512 is great. I think even on, on my machine, I have 256 uh, yeah. solid state. So the SSD drive, I, I don't even know if, you know, SSD is probably the, the norm. When I got this, I think it was two years ago, uh, it was about a thousand bucks and um, the SSD was optional. Right. So SSD stands for solid state drive. And basically means that you don't have any moving parts. It's like a huge, big memory card. So this makes it uh, less yeah, prone to failure. Uh, so it, it's just a little bit more a little stable, faster, a little bit quieter, faster, not as hot. Yeah, but I, I think these days it's state of the art that you have SSD. If not, you should do it. So the only reason why you needed a large hard drive in the past is because often you had to download data. Depending on what software you used, you had to download the data. And over time, this build up, especially or programs. Or programs yeah. yeah so these days it doesn't matter i have 512 gig you have 256 i, I think you can always is... plug in an external hard drive that which is cheap too well plus there's dropbox there's google drive and i mean everything is cloud-based and uh, usually what takes the most space on your computer are your pictures and videos that you take on your phone so you might as well back these up to the cloud because this is where they live forever we are just talking about a trading computer right now so i think 512 will be plenty. Okay, uh, let's see if we find uh, some more information on this computer because here what I'm looking for is really the dedicated graphics card. And if you don't know what to look for, really walk into a Best Buy, talk to an associate and say, I would like to have a computer with a dedicated graphics card. Let's see if it is easy to find. Otherwise, we will not uh, waste too much time on there. So there's an, uh, an Iris uh, X. Uh, okay, so this here is interesting. This is where it goes back to uh, your comment regarding gaming computers. Uh, so I just want to scroll down and you see here, you see the graphics card and you get an idea, budget friendly, entry level, runs games at low to mid range. So th that gives you an indication that this is probably not the fastest graphics cards that is out there. So depending on how you look for a computer, definitely would look to for mid range. I don't know if you need a uh, high end. Uh, not for trading. Not, not for, for trading. trading, yeah. But I definitely would look for a mid-range Mid. graphic card. So as you can see, I'm not paying attention at all to the processor because honestly, most of the computing these days is done on the servers. If, if you use, for example, the PowerX optimizer, we are doing everything on our servers and just displaying you the data. And this is true pretty much for all applications. Just if you're using Google Chrome, you definitely need a lot of RAM. But I'm not paying attention to the uh, to this uh, yeah crazy, uh, processors, whether it is, uh, I don't know, an 11th generation, let me just bring it up here, core seven or core nine or quad core or dual core, all of this kind of stuff. For, for trading, it doesn't seem to be an issue uh, with all of these mathematical complications because for trading, it's now basic complications or math these days, you know. <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, looking, at, looking at our setup here, what, what else uh, should we talk about? I think that is pretty much it. It's uh, fairly easy. It's, it's not that complicated. You have a more sophisticated setup at home with multiple monitors. And for me, it's really this and uh, the second monitor that I've usually there. Right now, it's standing over there on the table. Yeah, so that that's uh, pretty much it. Okay, well, I hope it helps to decide uh, for you to decide what trading computer to buy when you want to new, have a new trading computer in 2021. And it really depends on what applications you use. If you're completely web-based, you can consider just trading on an iPad, possibly. Uh, if you still use some applications that you download to your computer, 
don't go crazy. I think a computer for around $1,000 or $1,200 will do just fine. I mean, they got a little bit more expensive with the ship shortage and uh, all these uh, supply chain issues, uh, but you should go overboard. Rather spend some more mon uh, money on an extra monitor. Now, one quick thing. I know you were just wrapping it up, but would you uh, do a, a touch screen? Is that important to you? No. Yeah. No, it's uh, not. I'll be honest. Um, I have... Uh, I can't remember the brand. Best Buy uh, loves them. But um, I have a touch screen. And honestly, I thought I'd use it more. And for trading, not at all. So I don't think that's as important. Unless you're going to use it more as a tablet too. Yeah, on a tablet it's important. But every tablet obviously is a touch screen. But for monitors, never use the touch screen. And I'm okay with that. All right. Hey, uh, if you enjoyed this video, we have a few more videos popping up here. Uh, take a look at this. Click on like. Hit subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Wait, don't go anywhere. You know that this will be cut out for the editor because we're not done yet. We will talk about uh, our current trades and we will also talk about any questions that you have. And I see that there's many comments flying in. We haven't had a chance to read the comments just yet uh, because we want to just on, focus on uh, giving you this information first. All right, Mark, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about a, a few trades that we did this week. There was really not a whole lot uh, of wheel trades uh, that we were doing. There we go. This is what I wanted to show. And uh, it's mainly because the, the markets have been chopping along. There, there wasn't much going on there. Yeah. And, and that was the, the thing, especially this week. We had some dips uh, throughout the week, but there wasn't a huge amount of selling. There, was, there wasn't this big selling pressure. It was small moves where we'd start out the day kind of fire and then kind of gradually dip lower. So we had a lot of stocks on our radar, but we pulled the trigger on just a handful. Uh, yesterday, we got into Capital One Financial, COF yep. is the ticker. Right. And uh, we sold, which, which strike price did we sell? We sold the 155 put expiring tomorrow. Right, so it's uh, somewhere around here, the 155th put, uh, 155 put that expires tomorrow. Right now it's trading at 165, so I'm pretty sure that this uh, expires worthless and will keep the whole premium. And we tried a few others. Uh, we wanted to get into a few others today. I uh, I like Boeing when it popped up on the scanner. So Boeing popped up uh, a little bit earlier today uh, for, no, not there, uh, but 212.50. Yeah. Yep. The 212.50 popped up on the wheel scanner uh, and uh, quickly, and it was actually a, a pretty nice trade. I know uh, in the group, a lot of our, our mastermind group got into this one, uh, and by the end of the day, it's looking real good. Uh, another one, I think it was yesterday, that we didn't get into, but I know a lot of uh, the group did AMAT and AMAT? Capri. I but think it was Capri. Look at it, well, AMAT too. Okay. This one yesterday was popping up. Yeah, I didn't catch this one in time. No. But it's okay. And then uh, there was uh, Capri, CPRI, I yep. believe. Uh, let's see, can't remember what strike price because I, I didn't take this trade. We didn't take the trade. Do you remember the strike price? Might have been around 48, 47. Yeah, I think it was right? 47. Might have been 47. Okay. The 47 put. So uh, when it comes to trading uh, the wheel, it was definitely a, a slower week. We, we did have a, a few PXO trades though. We did. We did. We had... Uh, two trades that were, were popping up and, and looking pretty good here. Uh, do you have them right there? Yeah. Uh, so the first one was FNGU. So FNGU, uh, so there's a Power X trade. And uh, again, we're looking for a fairly smooth equity curve here uh, when it comes to the PL chart. So the PL chart basically tells us what would have happened if we had traded this stock according to the rules of the Power X strategy over the past year. Now, in terms of the exits, we actually like this best with the balanced. Um, so let's just bring this up uh, with the balanced strategy, because for the balanced exit strategy, we have a really nice and smooth um, PL chart here. So this is where uh, we tried to enter this yesterday. Yesterday it didn't trigger, but it did today. So uh, the entry price that we wanted to see for this one was we wanted to enter as soon as this goes above 36.90. And this morning we opened higher. Uh, do you remember? I think we opened right at uh, 36.90. Do you remember where we entered here? 
FNGU we got in at 36.95. 36.95. So we entered at 36.95. Right now, as you can see, a few minutes into the close, it is up a few cents, uh, which is okay. I mean, we don't care what it does on the first day or second day or third day, right? We anticipate to be in this trade. Uh, if you look at it, mm, need to actually zoom out just a tad so that we see right here the amount of days so you see with this we anticipate on average to be in this trade for seven days and uh, the longest trade according to this exit strategy was 13 days so anywhere between seven and 13 days maybe five and 13 days so therefore we don't have to check it every five minutes uh, but it's always good to see if you are entering a trade and you are up by the end of the day um yeah and uh 20 uh, or LAC, another one. LAC. And, and did you show that there's now uh, intraday data? Yeah, we now have live data. This is the blue bar. So, uh, no, I didn't show this. So this morning we released an update, yeah. uh, version 2.5, and uh, now we have this uh, blue bar, and the blue bar is live data for the Parex strategy. Um, yeah, we also looked at FTAI. So this is another trait uh, that, or another symbol that we wanted to get in. We wanted to get in here at... Uh, I uh, can't remember. Let me quickly move this over here. There we go. So we wanted to enter at 2652. Uh, and uh, this never happened today. So 2652. We never crossed this. And therefore, we have an open order in for the next few minutes while the markets are open, uh, but has not yet triggered. So we didn't get into this trade. But that's another one that we liked. I want to go back to conservative and quick trades and then talk about LAC. Yeah, so LAC was another one. If we are just uh, zooming out, uh, zooming out, there we go. <laughs> so one of the disadvantages of using an iPad is that you have to use your fingers. And if you're good at pinching, great. I'm apparently <laughs> not that great at pinching things together. Uh, but also here, uh, we looked at the PL chart, and uh, this actually looked pretty decent. It was trading below $5, but this has been quite a while. And ever since it started trading above $5, it looked pretty good. So this morning, um, we entered this one. And right now, currently, it is pulling back a little bit. Do you know at what price we entered this one? Yeah, so we got into this one at $25.55. So it's, it's pulled back a little bit, but... Our stop is still about a dollar below that. Oh yeah, we should probably show this. Uh, we should show the, the stop loss and the profit target. So here are the entries and exits uh, that we chose. So the dollar, uh, the stop loss is at 23.49. So uh, we still have some room. We'll see if it pops up tomorrow or if it keeps moving lower. Uh, if it does, we get stopped out and so be it. And speaking of stops, Marcus, this is a, a good question. I don't know if you could quickly find it or not. Um, <laughs> but is on this subject is by 1969 oh, yeah, TX Cowboy. Yep. Um, so the question is, I, I thought we were supposed to stick to the quick trades and conservative. Are the other options okay to use? And it, it's a great question because I would say that right now our go-to is using a conservative and quick trade exit. And so that's typically what we're using with Power X trades. 9.6 out of 10 times. <laughs> 9.52 based on my calculations, I, but close it up. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so most of the time. <laughs> but we're always looking at the compare option, right? And so when we click on compare, we could look at the different exit strategies. And if something really stands out that's a lot better, then we're okay using it. In fact, uh, with the previous example where we decided to use the balanced exit, the conservative was okay, but the balance just really looked nice and with the balance, we're using a larger stop loss. So how that stock behaves and move, we thought that the larger stop made sense. And this actually uh, leads to another question uh, that uh, from SJ Singh, I thought you don't trade the three uh, X trades. Ooh, and this is question. really good. You want to answer that one? Yeah, well, we, we don't trade the three X trade when it comes to the wheel. But please understand that the wheel and the power X strategy, these are two different strategies. For the Power X strategy, we don't care if we are trading 3X or 2X or 4X or 5X. We actually don't care what the underlying symbol is. For the wheel, that is a different story because the wheel, you should only sell puts on stocks that you want to own. 
This is not the case with Forex Optimizer. So just make sure that uh, you're clearly distinguishing these two strategies and based on what you're trading, if you're trading the wheel, you're 100% correct. If you're trading the PowerX strategy, it does not matter. Okay. Good question though. I, I think it seems that we're already going into the Q&A, so I want to scroll back a little that bit. That was my fault. To the beginning. No, 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 no. It, it's absolutely fine. I just want to show you guys, so the, the way how it works, here you are, right? So we see all of the questions and comments uh, right here. And as you can see, there's right now a lot of comments coming in. So we usually try to go uh, in order here. And this is where, um, yeah, we, uh, we, we start from the stop. Start from the top. So let's uh, let's go back here and let's take a look at uh, Nacha's Lions Club. And uh, so trying the wheel for the first time. Okay, cool. Staying with the industry, sectoral oil and energy, uh, energy. the market crush is sneaking in. What I should do with all the stock? They will go down, then what weight? Well, uh, it's a great question. And you see, first of all, make sure that you're only trading the wheel on stocks that you want to own. And number two, make sure that you only trade a strike price at stocks that you want to own at that strike price, right? So I don't know what energy stocks you traded. I mean, yeah, over the past few days, all energy stocks were going up. We can probably uh, take a quick look here uh, at, uh, there. let's go to this uh, view. Uh, let's see what the energy stocks are doing right now. XOM, I mean, that's an energy stock. It's still doing good. I'm on a daily chart here. Uh, Conoco Phillips, uh, COP, I mean, that's doing good. I mean, I mean it, it seems that uh, the sector here is doing really, really well. So not quite sure. Um, oil and energy, I don't see a market crush sneaking in just yet when I look at this. And I mean, if it does, if you get a sign and you're really massively going down, fly a rescue mission. We have videos on this. I'll link to it in the description. So I hope this helps. Okay, cool. Uh, what else do we have? Eduardo from Mexico. Super to see you, everybody here. And uh, let's see, Daryl says, title is a bit clickbaity. Really? What? The best trading computer 2021? We just thought we'd talk about Mark, this. Uh I, I think some people came uh, because there was the oh, wheel. Sorry. And this was, you know, to, to be honest, we My mentioned fault. it on Monday's call that we were going to cover this. And then we, we promoted a different yeah. topic. But we thought that being here and, and being able to show everything, it made sense to do it today. Yeah, so. I, I thought you would like it if you see our setup. <laughs> right? I mean, because at, at home, we usually have our cameras fixed in front of us. So yeah. there's usually no cameras behind. Uh, here, as you can see, the cameras on tripod, so we could uh, get them around and thought this would be cool. So it's all my fault. I take full responsibility. I told the team this morning uh, we'll do the three tips for the wheel and we didn't. We'll do it on Monday, promise. All right, cool. Uh, what else do we have here? It's so good to see all the hellos. There's uh, Solitario, really, literally reading your PowerX book right now. Options chapter, okay. Cool. Options are exciting. Yeah, I mean, we have been talking a lot about stocks, but I know that you're trading a lot of options here, especially when it comes to uh, PowerX. Yeah, I, I love options with the leverage. Of course, you know, with the wheel, uh, options are involved as well. But with PowerX Optimizer, I'm constantly looking at the risk reward. And if it looks better uh, or comparable to the stock, I'll usually pick the option. Otherwise, there's times when the stock just makes sense. Yeah. So green days like today are not so great for selling puts. Yep, uh, these are the days where not a whole lot going on. I mean, Boeing popped up this morning. We tried to sell it. Um, I did not get the price that I wanted. I wanted to have 35 cents for the option expiring tomorrow. Uh, it dropped very quickly and I was not chasing the trade. This was our minimum criteria. So therefore, didn't get into this one. All right. Let's see. Kyle says, uh, follow Mark's recommendation in order video to get a second monitor went with the uh, Sidetrack Swivel Monitor. Okay, cool. I haven't looked at this one. I yeah. mean, there's so many. I mean, most of the monitors are good and they're usually between 170 and 200 bucks here. Okay. Let's see, Jim says, when you close out your puts at 90% of five positions, all look expire worthless tomorrow if nothing drastic happens before tomorrow afternoon. We talked about it this morning in the Mastermind. I think we should do a special coffee with Marcus where we talk about the philosophy of why we like to close them out at 90% profits unless it's the day of expiration or the day before expiration. So it's, it's a little bit of longer discussion. I think we do a, a dedicated one for this one. So stay posted. Marcus, uh, one thing I, I think it is important to mention though, since we talked about the gaming or computers in general, 
which we didn't mention. Ooh. That is, with these portable monitors... This camera. <laughs> you can click... I could run two of these directly from my laptop with these portable mon monitors. So they really don't take up uh, much processing or RAM or graphics, whatever you want to... Whatever it does, it doesn't do much of it. However, there was a question about maybe needing that better graphics card for multiple monitors at home. And quite honestly, my I have a Dell Hub that runs my... 47 inch and oh. the two 27s. Um, so the Dell hub is an important part of my setup at home. And we didn't mention the hub. You you have a, a hub, right? Too, kind of? No? Uh, just because of the cameras. Otherwise just because, okay. Would, yeah. Okay. Uh, just because of the So cameras. that is an extra thing I have at home that I didn't mention. Yeah. It says I have a four monitor rig setup, completely over the top, but makes me feel powerful. I agree. My <laughs> biggest challenge is when I have more than two monitors. We're always looking for the freaking mouse. Where, where's the mouse pointer? I don't know if it ever happened to you. If you have too many monitors, you always, where, where's the mouse? Where's the mouse? So this is why for me, two monitors are fine. But Ed, I hear you. Makes you feel really good if you have more. Okay. Um, so Jamie says, how do you feel about trading the wheel on ETFs like QQQ uh, or a SPY? It's a great idea. However, you have low implied volatility. And when you have low implied volatility, the premiums are low. So in order to get a lot of premium, you have to go really close to the current price with your strike price. That's why we don't like the ETFs. So, I mean, an, an index is just in general a little bit lower volatility just because it doesn't move as much as individual stocks. Um, we like to look for implied volatility between 40 and 60 percent. And the indices often have around, what, 15 to 20 percent of implied volatility. That's why we don't like it. Unless it's a leveraged ETF. But that's why we don't want to trade those because right. they're too crazy. So Carl said wasn't on the scanner, but sold some puts in WFC. Earnings from them were very pretty good. Not sure why it dropped. It's a great point. It's probably because their earnings weren't as good as others in the industry. And this can sometimes happen, right? I mean, if you have JP Morgan yesterday reported that they made an additional $1.5 billion in profits. I don't know exactly what Citigroup and BAC reported, but obviously investors liked it better than what Wells Fargo reported, even though they might have beat the expectations compared to their peers, it might not have been that good. And this is probably why they're dropping. Okay. Chad also has a four uh, monitor setup. Love it. Not uh, just says, I've put expiring worthless tomorrow. We'll do nothing, letting it go. Yeah, I think, I don't think that tomorrow will be a big day. Last Friday was probably a bigger day. Last Friday, we had the jobs report. Sure. And I know many traders were pay paying attention to this. Tomorrow we have retail sales. Yes, it could move the market a little bit, but I don't see a whole lot. Also, usually when, uh, let's just go back here to the S&P. Often, when you see that the market is going up for four days in a row, so from Monday uh, through Thursday, you just have an up move. Often, you see some profit taking on Friday, uh, but this is not what happened here this week. I mean, if you look at this week, and we're zooming in a little bit, so this year is Thursday, this is Wednesday, this is Tuesday, this is Monday. You see that markets have been rather choppy. So therefore, I, I agree with you. I, there's probably not too much happening here. So we, we also, our um, COF, what is it again? Capital One Finance, yeah. We let it expire worthless. We didn't close it today. Okay. Good. Let's see. Uh, you have a peanut gallery today. Yeah, we have uh, still some mastermind <laughs> members. Officially, we, we wrapped up our mastermind, but they don't want to leave. So they're sitting here <laughs> watching us live. So we have a live audience here. Uh, super exciting. Uh, let's see. Hey, wave. There we go. Okay, there's way more. You can see them just the way how we set up the camera here. Anyhow. Good. So John says, hello, love the input from the community rockstars, Teresa and Andy. Any chance of having them as special guests? We could do that. Uh, we fun. could do that. So um, we will see. I mean, right now it seems that we have so many topics that we want to cover. I mean, you see, we already have a, a good backlog here of topics. Uh, but yeah, we can, can absolutely bring on Teresa, Andy, Jake. Let's see. Cool. Good idea. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, cheaper model handles all of my trading uh, needs. But it lags from Zoom and the webinar shop software. Yeah, Zoom. Zoom is pretty resource intensive. I mean, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Come on, guys. I mean, your your value. Let's just bring up Zoom here for a moment. Let's take a look at that uh, ZM. I mean, uh, they now have a valuation of what eighty billion dollars, and with the capital uh, <laughs> with the market capitalization of eighty billion dollars, you can't program the software in such a way that it's not that resource intensive. You think, right? Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, chat rooms are the resource of nowadays. That's true. That's true. Hey, Al's daughter is learning German. Guten Tag. That's always a good start. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, so let's see. Trading view charts with the Parex strategy bars. FTAI is showing a black white bar. Uh, but now it's still showing a green bar. I, I don't I, I don't think it's uh, showing a green bar. Uh, let's uh, let's actually uh, go over there. Uh, let's take a look at this uh, PowerX optimizer. Which symbol? FTAI. FTAI. So uh, it might be a little bit confusing, but the last bar right now, uh, this year, we are coloring the last bar in blue. And there's a reason, because it doesn't matter what the bar does throughout the day. I mean, through day, throughout the day, it can be green, red, black, uh, purple, Pink, it doesn't really matter. It only matters for the PowerX strategy what it is at the end of the day. And this is why we colored it blue. It's really blue, right? I mean, if you look yeah. at it, it's not green. It's blue. It's blue. It's it's blue. blue. Okay. So, uh, hope that helps. This is why it is blue because at the end of the day, as soon as the markets close, 30, day, uh, 30 minutes after the close, we will color the bar based on what it brought for the day. Yeah, and on this one, I I like the at the money 27 call, but it didn't trigger, so I don't trade calls unless yeah. it triggers. All right, Natra says, you have recorded a YouTube video about the best trading computer. I do, but it was a year ago, I think. I mean, it has it has been a while. And this is where we talked about desktop versus laptop, and I think desktop is not a very big deal anymore. So uh, this is why I thought we do an updated one, because things are changing so quickly. So I might just, uh, Unlist the other one, delete it because it's a little bit outdated. Okay, cool. Uh, so the question from Alan is, I have a question. Can I buy an ATM call instead of a deep in the money call and sell covered call as a modified PMCC? You could. I mean, you can do a lot of things. There's, there's a million ways to make money with trading. Sounds like a good idea. Don't want to necessarily say that this is a... The best idea ever or worst idea sounds solid try it out i mean if it works if you're making money with it do it absolutely all right jim says uh, love the rockwell strategies close uh, tomorrow about 170k in realized profits congratulations nice. jim that's awesome okay junior updated two computers to 16 gig and it make a big difference yeah i think 16 gig. Th these does. days you need 16 gig absolutely absolutely um, David says, do you ever hold real trades through earnings based uh, on three or previous earnings moves? No, we never hold real trades through earnings. I mean, uh, I mean, OK, never say never if you are assigned. So what we try to avoid is selling puts that expire after earnings. We don't like to do this. And if you see that, for example, you're selling puts on a Friday and you have earnings on Monday, Again, you could get a sign, so don't necessarily do this. If you are in a position, if you are in a position, then we usually hold it through earnings because now you are in a position and we don't necessarily want to close it. Yeah, and this is where you you could potentially sell higher strikes because there's more volatility priced into a higher strike option. So you have a little more upside. But when you're just selling puts, your profit potential is capped with the premium that you collect on that put. So if there is a, a pretty adverse reaction to earnings, it, it doesn't help you. Yeah. So Ed is running some simple trading algorithms and stock scans on a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, for our strategies, it wouldn't work because you need a monitor. I mean, this is how we like to trade. Everybody's different. Okay. Gosh, not sure. You're active here. You're new, right? I, I haven't seen you before, I think. Uh, in your recorded video, you strongly recommend a PC and not Apple. Yeah, this is why I say things, things change, right? I mean, when I did... Mark and I just talked about this. Uh, there were just more trading software packages that ran on a PC than on a Mac. This has completely changed. Hence the updated video. <laughs> okay. All right, Mike is using a MacBook Air M1 with 16 gig. Oh yeah, my gosh. Uh, that's uh, more than enough. I, I know. I'm very excited about the new M1 chip, so I can't wait until the Apple event next week. And I hope that they announce the 15 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 chip. And if so, I'm a buyer. All right, good. What else? Carlos has a Dell XPS uh, with 32 gig of RAM. It's a rocket. Yeah, I think that's almost overkill. But if you can afford it, you see, this is a matter of pricing. If you can afford it, go for it. Do you need it uh, for trading? No. For other things that you do, maybe. See, for me, for a lot of video recording, a lot of video editing, yes, for me, it makes sense to have 32 gig of RAM. Okay. What else? Are gaming laptops good for trading? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Okay. 
So uh, let's see, um, what will USB-C hub do you recommend to do dual screens from a laptop? Um, you see, these days you can have fairly clear. Is this still plugged in, or can I unplug this, Mark? Uh, you could. Let, let me. I think this goes yeah, to this monitor. Yeah, you could Okay. Um, uh, I use an actual powered hub by Dell to connect my monitors, yeah. but, but this there the you have it, just USB. Probably around 20, 24 bucks or something yeah. like this, right? So, I mean, this is the one that Mark uses right now to power both of his monitors here from the laptop. Um, so, what I have at home is one from, I think it's called CalDigit. Uh, it's super expensive. It's like 300 bucks or something insane like this. But it's powered and it's Thunderbolt and I need it for the cameras. That is the only reason. Uh, otherwise, yeah, a powered one is probably a good choice. It, it's really better if run. you're using the bigger monitors like this one. And even the powering both off of this, it, it's a little tricky, but you could do one. But it depends on your monitor setup. Yeah. Let's see. Jig says, my $400 Acer laptop from Costco works just fine. Okay. Uh, Edward says, once you go to Mac, you never go back. I agree. And I mean, you see, I used to work for IBM. Uh, my, my blood was blue. And I mean, I, it took me a while to get away from Lenovo computers. Uh, they were called ThinkPads at some point. IBM yeah. ThinkPads. And then uh, when I replaced my Lenovo computer with the Mac, I, I kind of felt really dirty. And I did it. And I'm so happy. And I wouldn't get back. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Um, so Myron says, I'm not the fan of the online view of the Tastyworks trading view. Uh, I mean, the Tastyworks trading, I, I don't like it in general. Uh, their, their charts, I think, is this what uh, what Myron is referring charts. to? Sure. Yeah, not a not a big deal. OK, anyhow, so let's see. Trader has an app that works fine. Yeah, it, it does work OK. You see, I, I think that most charting software packages and uh, brokers have an app that works in a pinch. Uh, for, for me, honestly, I don't like most apps. I've used the Interactive Brokers app, the Tastyworks app. I've used the uh, Tradier app. And I really, if I can, I prefer doing it on my computer. Uh, so that's just me. Anyhow. Oh, my gosh. We are running out of time here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> time is flying when you're having fun hey i really it was fun uh enjoyed you being here today sorry for the mix-up in the title i promise in the next one we'll talk about the three uh most important questions and the most important question when it comes to the wheel is uh number one can you do it on a smaller account and we'll talk about it number two what do you do if you are assigned in a stock and you can't sell calls against it against it so we'll do this and number three what happens if the market crashes and you get assigned in all five positions? So these are the three most frequently asked questions, the questions that we get over and over here in the chat and in the comments, and we will answer them in the next Coffee with Marcus. So stay tuned, uh, subscribe, like this video, and we will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.